Hello once again, Monster Hobbies viewers. Welcome back to another cool little video. So today is just a short little stash ad. I know a lot of you people like those kind of videos. So there's two models here that I got at that GOMS show the other time, as well as I actually went up to our, uh, our town and the neighboring city. They have a, like a garbage dump, I guess, but Outside of that garbage dump, they have a reclaim center for items that are not garbage, but are still have some life. Like, you know, there's v, uh, DVDs there, there's coats and jackets and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of went in there. I was looking, I'm trying to get spooky town figures. Spooky town. <laughs> anyway, because they're 125th scale. Now the buildings are not, but the figures are. So I want to incorporate those figures into some model kit displays. Um, that's a different video. But I, I went up there to see if I could find some older Spooky Town stuff, because uh, the local Michaels, I, I got everything for this year. <laughs> and um, so I went in there looking for stuff, and I actually found four models there, but two are airplanes. But there's some really cool cars in here that I want to share with you. So without further ado, let's check out my four new model kits for my stash ad. When I went to the GOMS show, I met up with my old friend Ken Briscoe, and he had a booth in there, and he was selling all his military stuff. So I picked up this A model IAR-81 Boppy plane. Now this is Romania's aircraft that they had in World War II, and since my history comes from Romania, I always try to pick these up off of Ken when I see him. So the difference between the IAR-80 and the 81 Boppy is that the 81 carried these bombs on the front of the airplane. And, of course, these were used to drop bombs in uh, the Polesh raid, which basically they were saving the oil fields, the Romanian oil fields in World War II. So I have a few of these in my collection, but this is the first one that I have with the bombs underneath. Basically, these A model kits are pretty good. I can take the lid off here. They are made in, I think it's a Czech Republic, if I remember right. But you get some pretty nice instructions in them. This one is a little bit odd because it has a supplement in here saying, okay, in this kit you build it this way. But I can't really figure it out because. Eh, well, here they've got the same instructions, and it's kind of mixed with what's going on up here, so I don't know what the deal is. But at any rate, there's that. I can do a full unboxing later. But all the parts come in a little plastic bag, and they look quite nice. The detail is good on them. This uh, airplane had two gnome rotary engines, one in front of the other. The only uh, downside to these are the decals. I'm not quite, you know, impressed on how they look. It's supposed to be a blue dot in the center with the red ring. You know, much like on the top of the box art. Or like there. You know, but these things sort of fall a little short. It'd be nice if somebody could make me up a whole bunch of these decals. But at any rate, I mean, better to have than to have not, right? <laughs> Okay, we'll look at the next model. All right, so the second model we got here is MPM's version of the IAR-80A. Now, like I was saying, this one did not have the bombs in here. What makes these airplanes kind of cool is that they were originally... So, when uh, at the end of the 30s, Romania wanted to build up an air force. So they had brought in, or, you know, went out and got contracts for... A Hawker Hurricanes originally. So what happened there was that Hawker started to send over airplanes for Romania, but then as the war came in and started to become a little more intense or whatever, the uh, Hawkers, the British needed them, <laughs> so they only sent 50 Hawker Hurricanes out of a contract that Romania had for, I think it was 200 of the planes. So then Romania went to other countries to try to get contracts for airplanes, and they went to Czechoslovakia, or, yeah, I guess, now, yeah, the Czech Republic or whatever, you know, the Czechs. They went to the Czechs, and the Czechs sent over a bunch of planes, but the Czech planes that they sent were 
you know, basically garbage. There was issues with them and whatnot. So the Romanians took apart the Czech planes and they designed their own body for them and they rebuilt the engines and everything and then they put those engines onto the IAR 80s which is what these planes were and these planes were so successful that uh, America went over and was uh, part of the Allies and they were trying to capture the Polesh oil fields in Romania and when they came in with the B-17s and I think it was a Mustangs or something that they had the Romanians answered with these planes and as you can see they sort of look like a Falk Wolf but they have the uh, uh, what is it the Hawker Hurricane kind of wings so what was going on there is that these planes were as maneuverable as the Messerschmitts but as fast as the Falk Wolves with the engines so when they were fighting the Americans the Americans just figured they were getting shot down by Falk Wolves but they were actually getting shot down by the IR IAR 80As. Now these planes were also successful because after in about 44 the Romanians switched sides. They were no part no longer part of the Axis. They joined the Allies. So they were using these planes with Russia to fight against the Germans. And uh, basically after World War II these planes were still in service up to 1950. That's how good the design was. So with that bit of history behind us, we can now open this one up. This one is interesting because... Oh, I guess I'm wrong here. I thought I saw... Oh yeah, yeah. This one's actually interesting because underneath the decals, which still have these little rings in them, that's going to be hard, putting a decal on a decal. But look, they got this nice little instrument panel here. And then if you turn it over, you can see between the parts, there's resin components in this. Maybe I can wiggle them around here. Okay. Decals are in the way. Being in the way. <laughs> yeah. There is photo etch in here. All right. And there's resin parts. So that makes this kit really kind of cool, actually. And then we've got our instructions. So we'll do a full unboxing of this later, but this is just a here's what it's all about sort of thing. Look at you got the instrument panel and then that backing transfer. It'd be kind of cool to get a little light bulb in there so it would uh, shine out, but it all depends on how serious I want to get. So there's the engine there, and you actually glue the cylinder heads in there, and that's uh, resin. So again, really cool uh, interpretation of doing this. So here you got the two different versions from the 109th Squadron, and you also have from 140th Squadron. So again, really cool stuff. And then what else is in their, their lineup on the back? So that is the other model I got from Ken Briscoe. And again, really cool stuff. So this car here I actually ended up finding in our salvage center. They wanted $12 for it, and uh, the girl there actually gave it to me for 10 which was really nice. But check this out. This is the sedan version of this kit from the Street Rods edition. And if I turn up the side of the box, you'll notice there is something missing on this box. Again, though, there's some cool ideas for the sedan body. And we've got our big uh, Ford engine there. But if you notice... Okay. Got your engine and then the side view. And AMT really liked to, back in the day, show this, these models in black with the red wheels. The uh, Vicky was the same way. But notice what's missing on here? Yeah, the barcodes. So this is actually, see even on the back there's nothing there? This kit is actually from the 70s. So that is always cool. Now, the only issue with this is, this is somebody's build. So, for you guys that like survivors, well, I guess this is sort of a survivor. But take a look at this. The nice part is, there's its sedan body, which we haven't seen in decades. So, if anyone from round two is watching this, bring this one back, please. But you'll notice that the glass, whoops, the glass is in really good condition in this. The body 
has some, well, scratches in the paint, but that's no problem. We can always strip the paint down. But really the key ingredient that I need in this kit is the body of the glass and the interior in here. Now I did have this out before. Oh, there goes the steering wheel. <laughs> that's okay. How did I get this out? There we go. So really that's what we need. I like the patina on the seat here. <laughs> but look at that's interesting though. There is no uh, the doors panel is down here for the opening door and it's just blank right across that whole edge. <laughs> so I don't know if the real sedan is like that or what they did, but anyway, this is all good. See so we've got our glass in here. I'm gonna have to try to get the glass out, but that's hopefully not an issue. If I break any, it's all just flat panels in here, so that's easily replaced with uh, evergreen transparent sheet. He spray painted it, and you can see, I guess he had the hood on when he spray painted it because it's all speckled in here. You need to remove the uh, sprue attachment points and any seam lines on this, like right down here. But overall, I mean, it's not a bad build, decent build. The engine is sky blue. Testers, 1168, I think. You can uh, fact check that for me. <laughs> Headlights are put in really nicely in this. But again, I'm going to take it apart. And I'm going to build this one stock because, hey, when's the last time you saw that sedan body? And I like factory stock anyway. I like to build them all, all different ways. But... Um, if I Okay, so my building style is, if I buy a kit, I have to build it stock first. After that, I can hot rod it or customize it, drag race it, whatever. But I like to build the stock version first, buy another one, and then build it, you know, some other alternative. Um, the hood sides have been removed, so I'll have to see if I can find another hood. Now the nice part is though I have a lot of these kits so that's not an issue. But check this out. It has these fenders as well. These are also missing in more modern kits. These are the Bob Defenders. They kind of have a little bit of a Volkswagen Beetle sort of feel. Let's see they would go on like this in the wheel arch somehow. <laughs> But anyway, they go on in the wheel arch. So I will keep those fenders for a hot rod, um, maybe 32 Vicky or something that I have more of. So that's cool. It's got the original instructions in here. It's got the original tires, and these are quite different from what you see now. They are, these are sort of fat and wide, but there are some skinnies. Oh, they're in the other box. Okay. But overall, I mean, this is cool stuff. I'm glad I found it. It's an intake manifold. That's from the other kit I got. Okay, so I'll show you the other kit. And like I say, a little bit of uh, easy off oven cleaner. We'll <laughs> get I don't know if I want a black sedan. I don't know, something kind of cool about that. But at any rate, yeah, so there's one of the ones I got. Let's take a look at the other one. Here is the other kit that I picked up at the same Reclaim Center. Again, I got it for 10 bucks. So this is, of course, the 39 Ford two-door sedan. Now we have AMT currently under round two have released this thing like a dozen times in the last three years. <laughs> so that's okay. But, you know, I had to get this because, again, it was there for super duper cheap. But, as you can see, no barcode. So again, it is true, right out of the 70s. So, really awesome stuff. Now I have three of these in the collection. I've got this one, the 32 that I just showed, and I also have the 34 Ford pickup truck, all in these street rods with no barcodes. So, that's cool. Now again, this one has been built. Basically, every one of these that I have has been built, <laughs> and unbuilt, and rebuilt, and whatever else. But here you can see it's blue. It's very dusty. But it is quite cool. And it is dropping parts. But yeah, you can see the dust in the 
crevices here. So what I want to do with this one, now I was talking with my friend James, because uh, we went to the show, of course, the GOMS show, and I was saying, you know, I really want to build a, a weathered, beaten out type of car, but I don't want to get a brand new kit for that, because when I get a new kit in my brain, I go, oh, I have to build this all nice and clean. Well, this one is quite worn out. Too bad I can't keep the dust on the windows. <laughs> well, I guess I could clear coat it if I'm very careful. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the uh, weathering technique on this, because this doesn't really matter to me. But I'm also going to try to correct some stuff, because here you got that seam line it goes up into the fender, so I'm going to try to clear that up. But overall, this is not bad. The hood opens, the engine is painted red for some reason. I was able to get the body off of here, and the interior as well. There's kind of a neat thing in the interior that uh, the former builder did. It's a little bit faint, but you can see that this is almost like a wood grain in here. That was the cool part. I don't know if that's intentional or just how his brush worked out. But I'm going to try that um, fuzzy fur stuff that I've got that looks like uh, the upholstery for this thing. Just to give that a bit of a whirl. Now it's funny, when you take the glass out, <laughs> you can see that little dusty ghost right there of the windows. And then where it was covered by the body, it's nice and clear. But again, you can see the uh, the rims on here. There are some issues. The tires are not completely round, but they are smooth with no lettering, which is interesting. Now luckily I do have a lot of these parts trees for this kit, so I can get those headlights. Because one of them is missing, as you can see. So I have a replacement for that somewhere. And then I've got the other bits of the 32 Ford in here that I showed before. And these were the other tires that came on that 32 Ford. Now you would cut out the webbing in here and then use these little rims and push them through. The very tiny tires in the front. There's one of those fenders again. And then I've got other 40 Ford components in here. That's the uh, little Ford engine for the other one. And it's got the velocity stacks on here, which I don't know if those are in my other uh, kits. This is cool. Look at this. Open the scroll, and what's written in the scroll of the ancients? Oh, the decals! It's funny that they curled up like this. So tight, too. But uh, I think if I tried to use these, these would just explode, because they're, well, I mean, rolled up like that. It's all crinkly, right? So, and I know, you, you clear coat them with lacquer and whatever, so. But, I don't know. Anyway, there's the big weirdo tires they had for the customs. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, there's the model, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, and until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next one.